This is a video guide to installing the Clip Rail Track system for screeded floors. This guide uses a single loop system, but the advice also applies to multi loop systems. This video is not designed to replace the ProWarm installation manual. You should ensure you have read it thoroughly before installation. For information on manifolds and pumps for use in single loop and multi loop systems, please refer to our manifold and pumps videos found on our webpage or contact us on 01268 567 019. The Clip Rail Track system for screeded floors is suited for rooms where insulation is already in place beneath the concrete subfloor. If insulation is to be fitted just below the screed, we recommend you use our pipe staple system. The Clip Rail Track system offers the same flexibility and speed of installation as the floor pipe staple system. Our Clip Track system is suitable for traditional screed, pumped anhydrite, or cement screeds. Before you install the Clip Rail Track system, you must ensure the floor is clean, level, and free from dust and debris. If installing onto an uneven concrete base, Use a suitable levelling compound to flatten out the surface. Failure to ensure the floor has been adequately flattened will produce an uneven installation surface and could damage the system. In addition to avoiding damage, the clip rail system uses a built-in self-adhesive strip to lock the clip rails in place and it is therefore vital that the floor is level prior to attempting installation. Before installing the clip track system, Run edging insulation around the perimeter of your room and other permanent fixtures, such as columns or stairs. This allows for the screed floor surface to expand and isolates the screed from the surrounding structures. If you have a plan for the pipe placement, the clip track system should be installed running across the length of the pipes. The clip track system should be installed direct to the subfloor using the self-adhesive strips on the back of the rail. Before beginning the installation of the heating pipe, create a plan of how the pipe will be laid, ensuring you record where it will lie, bend and that the pipes maintain the optimum distance for your system, as stated in the guide. If you are purchasing a bespoke system designed for your house, you can request a pipe layout design. Pipe layout is not critical and you can lay them to suit your needs but pipe spacing for standard rooms is typically 250 mm. Note that on areas such as conservatories or rooms with high heat loss, 200 mm centers are required. If the heat supply is an air or ground source heat pump, 150 mm centers or less are recommended. Ensure the pipes are not laid under fixtures or fittings, such as kitchen cabinets. Ensure that the pipes start, the flow, and the pipes end, the return, are both located at the pump or manifold. Using a marker pen, label the pipes with flow, return, and the loop number. If installing a multi-loop system at a manifold, use your marker pen to clearly label each pipe for flow, return, and loop number for each heating pipe loop in the system. Pipe is easily fixed to the clip track system by firmly pushing it down within the curved recesses in the clip track. This will firmly hold the pipe in place. Set the pipe back from walls and doorways approximately 100 mm. The layout of your pipe should follow an up and down pattern. When bending the pipe, be sure not to overbend or kink the pipe. If you do kink the pipe, we recommend adjusting the layout of the pipe so that the section of the pipe which was kinked now resides along a straight section. The pipe can be manipulated by hand or using a 16mm pipe bending former. Whilst installing the pipes, avoid walking on them or storing tools near them. Whilst they are robust, it is better to be safe. Once the pipe is laid, cut the pipes at the pump or manifold, leaving enough spare length to attach to the pump or manifold. Your installation pack may have been supplied with an example diagram to assist in your planning of the layout. If you're in any doubt, contact our Technical Support Centre for advice. 
The pipes should be filled and pressure tested prior to screeding and left under 6 bar pressure whilst screeding is carried out. Please refer to our manifold and pump videos found on our webpage. Screeds should be laid immediately after pipe laying and testing to ensure that it does not get damaged. The screed floor must be fully cured before any heat is applied. A general rule of thumb is to allow one full day per 1 mm of screed thickness up to 40 mm. Each additional millimetre of screed thickness requires two days each to dry. An accelerator can be added to the screed to speed up the drying time to as quickly as seven days. Please check this with your screed installer for specification. If a sand and cement screed is used, it must be fibrous. It is essential that the screed is completely dry before any covering is installed. If you are planning on installing a wood flooring finish, it is important that you observe the wood's natural response to its environment. Wood will expand and contract based on environmental conditions such as temperature and humidity. So you must ensure the wood floor covering has been acclimatised by storing it inside prior to installation. The wood manufacturer's installation instructions must be followed. When installing the wood flooring, allow for this natural expansion by leaving a gap around the room edges. Allow 5 to 8 millimetres depending on the depth of your skirting board. When installing engineered wood floorboards, these should be orientated 90 degrees to the direction of the pipes. It is vital you follow the manufacturer's guidelines for all engineered wood floor coverings. If you are in any doubt, contact our Technical Support Centre for advice. If you plan on installing a laminate floor covering, because it is thinner than engineered wood, you will have the advantage of an increased warm-up time. Laminate flooring is normally a case of simply clicking together. You must not use a laminate that has an insulation fitted to the back. You must use a suitable, breathable underlay. Refer to the Laminate Flooring Manufacturer's Installation Guide or contact our Technical Support Centre for advice. Ensure your floor covering is compatible with underfloor heating and that the combined TOG value does not exceed 2.5 TOG for the underlay and carpet combined. If you are in any doubt about the suitability of your floor covering or installation, contact our Technical Support Centre for advice. Vinyl floor coverings include linoleum, carndine and Amtico. Vinyl floor coverings are glued directly to the screeded floor. You must refer to the floor covering manufacturer's guide as to the correct method of installation. Ensure this surface is clean and free from any contamination which could inhibit the adhesion of the tiles. It is essential that the screed is completely dry before tiling. Fix the tiles using a suitable flexible tile adhesive. Ensure full compression of the adhesive to give a void-free full adhesive bed. Allow the adhesive to cure for the recommended time by the adhesive manufacturer. Grout the tiles using a suitable flexible tile grout, then allow to fully cure before trafficking. The underfloor heating system should not be brought into service for at least 14 days to ensure all tile adhesive and grouts have had time to dry and cure naturally. Initially, start the system with the thermostatic valve set to 35 degrees Celsius. Then the water temperature should be brought up gradually by 5 degrees Celsius per day to the maximum working temperature, normally 50 degrees Celsius for screeded floors. When first starting up the system, it may take 12 to 24 hours for the heating effect to become apparent. If you have any questions about the installing process, call our Technical Support Centre on 01268 567 019.